Okay, so this is the Queen's Council. It's June 4th, 2021, 2021. And the topic of today is body, body image, body love, aging gracefully, our bodies changing, how we are living and embodying our day-to-day -day lives, what our body means to us and how we relate to our bodies. If you've worked with me before or you have had your own practice, perhaps you understand there's a holistic component to the mind, body, um, heart, soul, and that it really is a composite. And so, yes, I'm using this as one particular aspect to talk about as the subject of body, but it really is in unison and in collaboration with the mental body, the emotional body, the psychological ramifications of how we process things and, and how we relate to things, and also our spiritual path in relationship to the body. Because one of the things that I've, welcome, welcome for anyone coming, one of the things that I have found is that we are spiritual beings in these beautiful bodies, these temples that we reside in. We have these complex brain structures that are phenomenal. They're incredibly powerful. And sometimes they get disconnected. And when I have started to look at the body from even just from a medical perspective, we often segment things like um, we isolate things into el elbow pain, neck pain, uterine pain, things like that, as opposed to the composite whole and what the bigger picture is. And what I wanted to start to delve into, and we're going to delve even further into these, into a deeper um, conversation in the next Queen's Council, because I, again, I think that this is like a tip of an iceberg thing, how it relates to you, because this is such a personal journey. So you might think that one person doesn't have a clue what it's like to be in your body. And you're right. You're absolutely right. It is a personal experience. It's a, and it's a spiritual experience for you on how you are honoring this temple and what it has taken to get to this point. And I want to just first acknowledge all of you, because if you're here, it means that there's something valuable for you and you're wanting to be in more harmony with it. Um, and perhaps you also have loved ones that have gone through some challenges with their body too, whether it's issues of body image, body dysmorphia, whether it's issues of self-esteem and uh, self-confidence or unworthiness, whether it has to do with disfigurement or disability, uh, dis-ease in terms of how our bodies have physiologically or anatomically come out the way we are. Um, so there's a huge spectrum into what this, this topic is. And so it's each unique for you. So I know I'm not gonna be able to touch upon all of it. And I just want to, um, to acknowledge that, but at least let this start to sit in and ripple through your consciousness. And hopefully you can take something away from it. So I'm just gonna pull up, um, like I said before, I have some, some great research and, and different ways of thinking about this, but let's just start, I'm gonna have to say in the preface, you know, this is not medical advice or is it meant to diagnose or treat a medical problem? You know, even though I'm a nurse practitioner in training and um, and also massage therapist, I'm very familiar touching and working with the body and working with the body in different ways. Um, this is really about my journey as a woman too. Just like all of you, I have had an incredible challenging um, personal experience being in my body. And um, I don't usually speak about it. I'm just gonna have you guys all mute yourself if you aren't. And I don't even know if this is where I need to come in and share my own vulnerable story, but I can also say that it's one that has been very um, 
it's brought in a lot of pain and it's brought a lot of suffering to the people I love in my life and a lot of stress and anxiety. And, um, and then it's also been incredibly rewarding and incredibly empowering. And I can uh, say that it's an ever evolving process on how to be in my body, how to live in my body, how to love my body, how to love that it's changing and it's growing. And that, um, and I, and I think that's all what you're kind of going to. It's like, we have a history with our body and it's now today. What does it mean for us today? And what does it mean for you going forward? How do you want to be in your body for the rest of your life? Have you been happy with your body? Have you been at odds with your body? Are you in sync with your body? If you have, brilliant. And each time you can connect with your body and love your body, not only are you impacting your own personal journey, but you're also holding space and, and strength for women beyond you. You're also a beacon of, of the journey to say, I've come this far. Maybe it's not even in this lifetime. Maybe you've always been okay in your body, but maybe you know somebody who hasn't been. And so it's how to show compassion and how to hold a strength and as, as well. So there's so many different ways we can approach the subject. Um, so I want to ask you guys some questions and you can put your answers in the chat or you can write them down. You don't have to share them if you don't want to, but I just want you to, I just want to start you thinking about how you define body image, negative body, positive body. And now is that as a personal thing? Is it how other others perceive you? How you feel other by others around us? Yeah. So it's not even your image, it's how others are perceiving you. how you feel others perceive you. And so whenever there's a feeling, there's often a thought behind the feeling. So one of the things I wanna take you through today is just that self-exploration of having more self-awareness of that thought process that, that uh, can come through our bodies, how and what you believe about your physical appearance is one of these definitions and how you feel about your body. Body image is actually how you feel about it. So even though it's an image, it's an embodied feeling, it's an embodied experience, which is why body dysmorphia for some people who are familiar with that, which I suffered from, from for many years when I was a teenager um, was so serious because it was such a felt embodied experience when it didn't matter what anyone else was telling me or what society was telling me. And the irony of it is, is that it was all planted by a seed of what my, my uh, coach told me. So there, there's an irony to that too. And when you think about body image, not only how you feel about it, about your body, so that's like your relationship to it, but that's also how you feel in your body. So how are you all feeling in your body today? Like say on a scale of zero to 99 or something like that, how are you feeling? You might have some aches and pains, you might be feeling a little something something, but how are you feeling in your body? I'm gonna say I'm feeling about 88. There, that's, my, that's about how I'm feeling in my body today. You're feeling a nine. Is a nine like a 99 or is a nine like on the low scale? Nine out of 10, okay. So you're about 90%, yeah. Chelsea's 80, yeah. I'm sorry, I went to scale to zero to 100, but tired and achy at 50, yeah. I, I definitely hear you there. Absolutely, especially on a Friday after a long work week. Oh, good. And so as you know, you know, this, this, this inner checking in with herself and how we're feeling in our body is just to bring more awareness. And in that caveat, I want us to all now take a, take, take, take a couple of deep breaths 
And put your hands on your heart. It tunes into this inner part of you, coming back into your self-love. And just honoring all of these emotions that you're feeling about your body. Maybe you're feeling tired and drained. Maybe you're feeling critical. Maybe you're feeling really proud and, and recognizing just how far you've come. Maybe you're just smack there in the middle and that's okay too. And that you're just giving yourself this precious time to be aligned with you, to be aligned with your body in a certain way, to let it know that it's okay. And tapping into all of us too, that has so much to honor and rever about each one of you because how we're perceived does make a difference. And there's spectrums of reference. And depending on the day and our vulnerability, we can absorb those comments from outside. And in this now moment, this is really about you just to go inside and honor this beautiful temple. that's been working so hard for you to move you around this earth, relating to others, getting us from point A to point B, holding space on this planet, being vessels, being worker bees, being queen bees, and so I want you now to just tune into a state of gratitude for a moment. Gratitude for what's working for you. Because it's so easy for us to focus on that old horseback riding injury and the rib popping out this week or my lower back that's been hurting or tension, just whatever it is. So let's just focus on those parts of ourselves that are working so good for us. Gratitude, reverence. Gratitude and reverence. Setting intention that as we explore this topic, we can, in the back of our minds, know that we want to come back to gratitude and reverence and compassion too. Compassion for our bodies, compassion for our journey, knowing that everything is okay, that even the challenging times and the critical minds and the thoughts too, it's all been a big part and journey for you. There's nothing wrong with that. It's part of this human experience that we're here. And this is why it's today. Today is the day for us to start to take even more little shifts to uplift our consciousness and how we reside in these bodies, how we relate to these bodies. And it just so happens to be summertime. So I feel like it's a good time for us. Take a nice deep breath in. Move your hands together. Just unifying our mental body, left brain, right brain. So we can just be a little bit more open to everything that comes through. Good. All right. So I want to initiate there's a couple um there's a couple diagrams that i'm going to put on the the website but one of them came i thought it was brilliant it, it's basically a body image investment it's the idea that how we have a have body images is based on pluses and minuses that we absorb from from the world and from our own self worth and so as you have heard me perhaps say before, that for every negative thought, which is incredibly dense energy and consciousness, it's heavy, it's sticky, and it stays in our body. And our body keeps score. 
So for every ever negative event that has happened to us, any negative um, circumstance, our body absorbs it and internalizes it, right? So that would be something like an, a, neg a negative comment that perhaps you received at one point or another. Um, for the same thing, we might get tons of praise or we might feel this kind of external support from all our culture, from interpersonal relations, from our community, from our spirituality. There's all these different aspects that can have positive and negative as a filter system to this, this negative or positive body image. So I want you to imagine that you're kind of like yin and yang inside. There's the negative evaluation of our bodies, and then there's the positive evaluation in the bodies. And this can change throughout the course of a day. It can change from the course of, you know, throughout our lives, right? So you might hop on, you might be feeling great in the morning and you hop on a scale and then boom, you immediately feel absolutely horrible and it just drops you right down and it makes you start having a horrible day. Have you guys ever had that? I know it's, it's blown my day before. Okay, well, I've, I mean, I've worked very hard not to, but I just don't weigh myself anymore. But, you know, there's different tips of, of how not to get triggered enough so that it spirals your mental body and into this kind of despair place. But that's just one example for a way that immediately you have this outside, what is it? It's just a number. And then all of a sudden, it just makes you feel horrible about yourself right? Or maybe it's an event that you can't join and do because maybe you have a physical um, disability or something and it's not something that you are able to do and that your body's not strong enough or not healthy enough to do it. So just start to think about how we internalize this and then how we put our bodies down. That's the key thing is, is that instead of being in sync and, and being compassionate, we have this inner critic that comes up. But the other piece is, is a lot of positive things that can happen through. Our, so tell me, um, you can just put this in chat. What is, um, what's something that makes you feel really good about your body? I don't know. Maybe it's all, it's unconditional love from your friends who could care less what you look at. That unconditional love that your friends could be like, toss that. It keeps surviving all kinds of things. Your body, yeah. Yep, we are tough. We are warrior women. I always think of the like warrior goddess. We can handle a lot. Dancing, yes, Courtney, me too. I am with you there. That keeps me loving my body for sure. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, hum humility and being humble has really, really helped me loving my body. When I have worked um, yoga, working out, exactly. When I was, I'm just gonna share a tiny bit about myself. Um, Cause this isn't about me per se, but I want, it to think about how quickly we we condemn and criticize and ostracize ourselves and ridicule ourselves. And um, when I was younger, it's a long journey, it's a long story, but um, there was a time that I really was not happy in my body and really challenged by my body. And so my mom signed me up for she we lied about our age, my age. So I was the youngest in training for this um, environmental traveling companions. And I learned how to be a sea kayak and river raft guide for quadriplegics and inner city youth and cancer patients and blind people and deaf people. And, and one of the exercises what for two weeks is I had to wear something I couldn't see anything. And another two weeks I had to stay in a wheelchair for two weeks. And it just kind of went on through this training of, of learning how to process what other some, someone else has gone through. And I started to reevaluate this body that I was in and to start to come back to a place of gratitude for it. 
So that's kind of a dramatic thing. But when you're a teenager and you're slipping down this, a dangerous slide into eating disorders and body dysmorphia and, um, and something that's quite dangerous, that saved my life, actually. So I want you to think about how you've been humbled by your body enough to really appreciate it too. And can we keep coming back to that, to our strength? So I, I have a couple books I want to share with you because I think that these are um, powerful, not just in a bad body image, but body love and um, are, are powerful in the sense of understanding that our bodies are the composite energies of what we think and we feel, right? And the... And because of that, and this is where I come in as a nurse practitioner, because I'm always working with people who have different ailments to a degree. And I want them to think about it more holistically, not just from the allopathic medical model, but also from a way of what is, what have they been talking? What is their body trying to tell them? Right. And what, what's been coming up that hasn't been processed? What emotions haven't been processed? So I share this because body image and body love, a lot of it has to do with maybe it might have to do with wrinkles. Maybe it has to do with graying hair or darkening hair in my mind, my, I'm, I'm on the darkening spectrum, or it might be um, the saggy breasts. It might be going into menopause. It might be um, all these different things that impact our bodies. And then the big one is weight and weight in, in the spectrum of weight. So has any one of you had that, have had any issues around this that I'm mentioning? I hope everyone is being like, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and so the reason why I bring this up only is because this isn't our, our, our opportunity to really start to rewire Wait right now, yeah, um, and I and I think this is another reason why I brought I wanted to do this because everybody's coming out of COVID restrictions, and um, you yeah, had Chubby Club, yeah, and everyone um, may or may not be feeling comfortable as summertime comes, um, and I always think of summertime as you wear less clothes and so you're exposing yourself more and you're more vulnerable and so can this be an opportunity? Um, for us to not hold on to the extra that we don't need. So you can be healthy and be, be at a higher weight. There's a lot of evidence now to say that you can be healthy, live a very healthy life, that you are not necessarily, there's a co correlation, but not a causation to a mortality to be getting overweight, which I think is a really under, uh, misunderstood. But I also believe that there's a lot of extra that we hold on because we're trying to protect ourselves or for whatever reason, there's been a lot of emotional stuff that we've been holding on and we're, 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 we're literally holding on. And so this is what I want for us to be thinking about. So it sounds like weight is a big one today. So maybe we can use that as a focal point for the EFT tapping, um, but it doesn't mean that that's the only one. So. I'm going to teach you kind of a script and I'm going to also give it to you. So don't think you have to memorize this today, but um, maybe we can use it. And if there's another topic that's been really bothering you per se, um, you know, I, I think another one that I would like to talk about at some point is just how we age gracefully and what that means. Some of you are, are much younger and we're all in a different spectrum, but we're all going to be processing as we age and how we, we stay healthy and we stay help, happy with our bodies. So the, the point of power is in the now moment, right here and right now in our minds. It doesn't matter how long we've had negative patterns, an illness, a challenging body, how long we've had different challenging relationships or our jobs or bosses or self ridicule. We know that we can make changes immediately in the now moment, right? So the thoughts 
that we've held and the words we've repeatedly used and created our life to this moment. So if you're feeling in a really good place, just give yourself a pat on the back and realize you've come a long way and that, and that you have learned to, to really make some big changes. Um, and then I can just encourage you that just right when you hit this like beautiful plateau, the universe gives you another little challenge to, to say, and now what? Can you love me now? And then you have to reach another, another peak, another challenge. And then the universe will come back and say, now will you love me unconditionally too? How do you feel about this? So it's like, I've, I've done that through various stages of my age in my twenties, my, my teenage years, I was horrible with myself and my twenties, not so much better. In my thirties, really stepping into my own power and appreciation for my body and, and, and seeing it in a different way. And now in my forties, I'm much more grounded and stable, but even now I'm having all these injuries because I'm getting older. And so now I'm having a totally different relationship with loving my body in a different way. So I just want to encourage you to, to recognize that these are, these are platforms of consciousness that we ascend and we evolve through in our body and, and our bodies are, are, you know, so each moment we have a, a positive body feels often feels like it's a sibling and that I fight or miscommunicate with it all the time. Mm, yes. Yes. So I am going to talk about um, one of the things is just the belief structures that we have around our body um, and the thoughts that we come, we, how we relate to our body. That's a big one. And, and how we switch from um, feeling at odds with it. You mentioned miscommunication, Chelsea, which I think is an interesting way of, of tuning in. This goes back to what the book I wanted to tell you about. So miscommunication, if our bodies is telling us something, do you think we, we know exactly what it's saying? How many people know? I'm, I mean, now I've, I've got a good language between me and my body, but how many people are able to really interpret what their body is telling them? Sarah, a little bit, Chelsea, a little bit, but you still feel there's some miscommunication. Okay. And do you feel sometimes that your body's at odds with you? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Sometimes maybe. Yes. Yes. And um, okay. So this is, this is where you're starting to feel a little bit like you're wanting one thing, but your body's doing another. Mm. You can type it out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what are, we are going to choose to think and say about ourselves, our bodies, aging, illness today, at this moment, it's going to create what you're doing for your tomorrow, for the next day, for your future. So one of the pieces is, so I want you to start to notice if what is being said to your body, is it an old script? Is it a new script? How old have you been having that script for? How old do you feel when you put your body down or when you start fighting like a sibling with your body? How old are you really feeling? How long has it been circulating in your psyche? I have various times in my life that I, I digress to. I descend many, many years, yeah. So, so this goes back to like seeds that were planted by potentially other people, events, preteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was right around that time that we were like taller than most of the guys. <laughs> we were bigger. And that was right around the time when I had a couple comments. One was my PE teacher saying I had Neanderthal bones, um, you know, things like, and I was, and calling, and back in the days, they would weigh you in front of everybody and say out the name, the weight. <gasps> I was like, how could you do that to us, right? Um, so just start to think about how old, whenever you have these, these inner dialogues, first set yourself in motion and start, start becoming an objective to it. How old am I feeling as I'm having this thought? And usually I resort back to being around 12, 13. That's about where it starts. Seven years old from a more conscious state is when we start looking at ourselves, seeing ourselves as other than. 
right? But it's right when we hit our, we step into that, um, we, our body starts shifting and changing into women right before is when we really start to have this inner critic come in and start to um, have that inner dialogue. Okay, so then the next question I would want you to tune into is, is whatever that you're saying to your body or what your mind is saying, is it usually a nice thing? Or is it usually critical? I have to hear, I can't hear you. Critical. It's critical. And, and it's an old voice that's coming through. Do you ever hear other people's voices? Mm -hmm. So again, this is one person's experience. Maybe someone else has a different dynamic. It's a mix of both positive. And, yeah, yeah. And so then it might, it might have been my mom giving me positive, wonderful, loving praise and really filling me up and supporting me versus something else that was totally external. Um, yeah. And I think, okay, so Jean, you mentioned something that I think is important. This brings up this book again that I want to tune into. Um, so I want us to start to have a little bit more of a critical experience on what our bodies are doing. If it's, a, if it's weight gain, if it's acne, if it is back pain or, or, or stiffness, stiffness in the neck, that's more physical. But, but when we're talking about um, experiences like extreme experiences, like anorexia, bulimia, when we're talking about uh, obesity to a degree, starting to think, and, and fatigue and illness is tuned into our body too, because if, if we are feeling this fatigue and illness, we, not, we not, might not be actually able to do the physical things that we want to do with our bodies, right? So then we have to whittle down to what is my body really trying to tell me? What is the, what is the story? What is the narrative and, and where did it come from? And how can I shift that narrative? And how can I recognize that that all of that's possibly from the past. That's where I'm saying our bodies absorb these things. These are unprocessed emotions and that it's time to let that old nonsense go. And it's hard to disattach to the pain body, but that's a really important piece, especially when it comes to uh, like feeling like you're gaining weight especially when you've gone through I know a lot of women I've done hypnotherapy with um, and in their deep places of the subconscious they had realized that a lot of their weight had happened because they had been traumatized by past relationships or physically or sexually abused and they didn't you know as much as they wanted to be in relationship and date they also didn't really want to expose themselves again. And it was only until they kind of made peace and let go and, and, um, and really saw the, their gain for that experience so they could love the past and let it go, the weight started coming off. Um, there's different reasons, of course, but that's just one experience too. But I want you to take yourself back to pre before preteen, back to when you were a little girl, back to when you were like a tiny little baby. You were perfect. As a baby, you were pure love and innocence. Everybody thought you were adorable. Even your poop, even cleaning your dirty diapers was loved. Everything was beautiful. You loved yourself. You had a consciousness that every part of your body was precious. You didn't even think about it. It wasn't about what anybody else had to think or say. All the rest has been learned. That's the nonsense stuff. And that's the stuff that can be unlearned. That's the stuff that you're doing. That's the stuff that you've worked really hard to get to this point. And that's why I'm not saying that you already haven't made some great advances within yourself, but just knowing that, that all of that has been learned. It's been picked up along the way. It's just a filter system. 
this goes back to us claiming our sovereignty as queens, right? And that's sometimes all you need to do is just setting that intention. You don't even need to pinpoint out what it is about you and your body and the disconnect or the miscommunication or, or feeling at odds. You just need to state, I'm claiming my sovereignty again. I'm coming back to my core truth of who I am. Taking some deep breaths, anchoring into your body, opening up your heart, feeling the connection of your heart, feeling connection of your body and loving your body, coming back to the realization that you are love, that you are loved unconditionally. So you might also start to ask when you're, when you're starting to have these different thoughts, why do I believe? that it's difficult for me to do something. And is that really true? Is it true for me now? Where did that belief come from? So that's very much like a cognitive behavioral therapy dialogue. Um, but, but I think it's just one that anyone needs to. So I might come back to, why do I believe I have gained weight or hasn't having gained weight or whatever is it simply because my PE teacher told me a long 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 time ago is it because that boy told me I have a bubble butt or something a long long time ago or what is it that where did that come from and is, is it really true and do I need to have that belief now would I be better if I dropped it so there's four steps observe the belief just being aware that it's at work Ah, you're back. You're cycling back. You're the echo from the past. You're back and you're at work and it's working and it's making me feel a certain way. Tuning into how it's making you feel. Is it that if it's positive, honor it, hold on to it because this is where our power is in choosing this belief. So you say it's a mix of both positive and negative. This is where it comes back to our self-awareness and intuitively living in our body, intuitively being in sync with our body because as soon as we can recognize there's a meat and an emotion, it stems from a, a thought and a belief. Ask what it's doing for you. What is that belief doing for me? Is it working for you? And you can pick on, pick it, you can hold on to it if it is. But I want you to realize that every time that we pick that, we're choosing that belief or that thought you're anchoring it to a timeline. You're anchoring it to a narrative. Mm -hmm. That timeline, is it gonna be for your best and highest good? Is it for what you're wanting going forward in your body? Does that resonate with you? Yeah. That's a really amazing question. So let's use this as an example. Can you guys, one of you guys throw out a belief and then I wanna get into, we have a few more minutes and then I wanna do an EFT tapping for you. So give me someone's belief that they have on them. That just keeps coming back, keeps coming back. And I won't succeed in my life, that I won't get the things in my life that I want if my body doesn't look a certain way. Okay, perfect. How does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelmed. Um, like you can never win. Right, like the, the big thing for me that I keep coming back to is, is honoring my body and apologizing to my body. I feel like I apologize to my body because I don't honor it all the time. But that is the, that is the belief. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just, it feels defeating. It feels defeating and exhausting. I would say if there's a core thing, it's exhausting is what it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And, and it, it, it stems from this idea that, that your body has anything to do with your success. In my industry, it does. And that's the, that's the unfortunate reality that I can't shake, mm -hmm. but I can choose to change it or I can choose to feed into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where I'm at is like, come on, come on, brain, choose to choose to change it, not to feed into it. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Not be exhausted by it. Yeah. Well, and so this goes back to it. This is the simple thing for you guys, all of us is, is how is it making me feel? And then really feel into it for a second. Really feel that def def deflation, how quickly it takes you down into this low state or the sense of exhaustion. Not, not forever, I'm, I'm just bringing you down for a second or two, but I want you to be able to really just be able to honor what it's doing for you. And can you imagine what it's doing to all your cells? Think about how, what it's doing to your brain chemistry right now as we're just starting to feel that. I'm not enough, that, that it's all about my body. But I know in, in, in different industries, body is more important than others in certain ones, absolutely. But I also know there's a spectrum and we can't think so black and white about things because I know a lot of people that are of all shapes and sizes in different industries, right? <laughs> you know, but, but, I, but the big piece is, do you I have to join the, uh, <laughs> well, I'm so, I'm so glad that you actually brought that up, Jean, only because in the Queen's Council for our deeper dive, one of the things I actually want to do, it doesn't mean you have to know each other, but I want us to take some time to actually give each other some praise and give each other some positive love and feedback, because sometimes that's all we need is just to be seen to be fully seen and acknowledged by people that we love and respect and honor. And, um, and I, so I want, I want us to do that in uh, next Tuesday, just so you know, because I want us to go around. So we each have like a whole long list of all these things. And I know it's not, it's just physical, it's just surface because we don't know our personalities, but I think it's, it's gonna be something that's important for us and it builds on our self-confidence and it builds on a positive body image on how we are perceived and how we're seen. So thank you for bringing that up. So then I, so this goes back to you, Sarah, then questioning how, what it's doing to you and what it's doing for you having that belief. And I think that that's where you're getting that exhaustion because it just comes, comes and comes and comes and, you know, and whether it's working for you and whether it's, it actually has turned out to, to bring joy into your life and to lift you up, you know, and ultimately, well, is it success we want or is it joy? Is it peace of mind? <laughs> What does success even mean? I can tell you that I would much rather be happy than be beautiful. I mean, that's a, that's a very polar extreme and one does not negate the other. I think you can have both, but I'm just saying that start picking which side you want of the, of the, of the spectrum. And so now you get to choose to hold on to it. If you're choosing it, you're anchoring into that truth, into that timeline, into that narrative. And so maybe that's the state, the statement. I don't believe it anymore. It's not working for me. I'm tossing that one out. Out of here. I'm out. Okay, let's do some EFT tapping. And um, I want to bring in this book, Lewis Hay. You can heal your body. She's a medical intuitive and she goes into more about different body Ill illnesses. So overweight, it represents the body speaking and saying, I'm scared. I have fear. I need protection. I'm running away from my feelings. There's some insecurity. There's some self-rejection and I am seeking fulfillment. So a, a mantra would be, I'm at peace with my own feelings. I'm safe where I am. I create my own security. I love and approve myself. I, as an ex-anorexic, 
go to denying myself life, extreme fear, self-hatred and rejection. Is it safe to be me? I'm wondering just as I am. I choose to live. I choose love and joy and self-acceptance. And we all go through these different extremes. Bulimia, hopeless terror, hopeless terror. When, when, my, when I found out my mom was going to die the second time she had cancer, hopeless terror. And I went and threw up immediately. A frantic stuff of purging of self-hatred because I was going to live and she was going to die. Like we internalize so much in our bodies and what we do at different ages. Aging problems, social beliefs, old thinking, fear of being one's on oneself, rejection of the now, varicose veins, standing in a situation you hate, discouragement, feeling overworked and overburdened. I stand in truth and live and move in joy. I love life and circulate freely. So this book has some really great mantras for all these different things from acne to hemorrhoids to pruritus to prostate issues to rat rabies. It's not medical. This is taking what resonates with you and see if it aligns. But I think it's a really important piece because our body is speaking to us in different ways. So EFT tapping, I teach and use, and I started to use this more in my late 20s um, to move emotions through me because, again, we store these different things. And it works with positive psychology. It's allowing for you to have an inner dialogue with yourself and acknowledge whatever you're feeling, whatever you're experiencing. If you're pissed, if you're frustrated, if you're freaking out and you're having a panic attack, if you're hating your body, if you want those corn chips and you just ate the whole bag of them already, whatever it is you're feeling, you can honor it through EFT tapping. And then the other piece and component is this having and calling upon that wise self. It's calling upon your sovereignty. It's having an inner dialogue. So Chelsea, you mentioned how there's this like um, body to conversation between you and your body. This is a perfect example where you can have that inner conversation with this is what my body is feeling. This is what I'm feeling this is what I'm experiencing. And I want this now or <laughs> something like that. Like I'm going to have that ice cream. Fuck you. I'm taking it. I'm doing my own thing. This is it versus, excuse my language, versus something else where you're commanding and saying, look, I know you're having a hard day. I know someone just dropped something that's, that's BS or whatever. And I want to honor you. I want to honor all that you're feeling and I love and accept you. And so it's hearing these different parts of ourself communicating to us in a way. And that's why it's so profound. So let's just do some EFT tapping. The points are underneath your pinky right here at the, the corner stone of your hand to the lower part of your pinky. There's a soft kind of fleshy part. Sometimes it's tender if you massage it. It's a place that we hold energy. It's one of our meridian systems in acupuncture, acupressure, like this. I love massaging it when it's tender. It's like there's stuff stored in it, right? And so that's where the first point is. And I go like this, like a karate chop, and I kind of tap it um, up and down like this. And it's a great way of grounding energy, especially if you're anxious especially if you're emotional, if you've just had a lot going on, let all of your emotions go right on into your hands and just chop away. And that's what it feels like. I'm just chopping through these emotions. I'm just breaking them up into tiny particles, something that my hands can honor and get rid of. And then you can kind of shake them up. Take some deep breaths. Okay, so the statement is, even though I feel blank about my body sometimes, I choose to recognize all that is held for me. So just to say that out loud, you can put this um, on mute. I'm gonna put this on mute, but you can say this and repeat after me. Even though I feel blank, you fill in the thing about my body sometimes, I choose to recognize all that is held for me. Tapping, tapping, tapping. Even though it's difficult to appreciate my body because blank, blank, blank. I acknowledge my body and all that it does for me. This is what we are coming back to gratitude and reverence, right? Even though sometimes I feel blank, blank, blank about my body, with my body, 
at odds ends with my body. I really do love my body. Say it out loud, activate that frontal cortex, activate those auditory canal. I want you to get it out of your amygdala. If you have been petrified by your body, now's the time. Top of the head, I really appreciate my body. Eyebrow and all that it does. So I, the eye, my body is amazing. Under the eye, it's been a friend to me. Maybe it's also been my arch enemy, but it's also been my friend to me. Under the nose, and it's taken on all the things that I couldn't. Think about that. It's taken on all the things that I couldn't, that I couldn't emotionally process, that I didn't have the psychological developmental tools to process. My body took it on. under the chin because it loves me so much. The collarbone right by your heart, the emotional center. I feel so grateful to my body for doing that. Taking it on when I couldn't figure it out. Under the arms, right by your bra straps, about four inches down from your armpits. I love and appreciate you, body. I love and appreciate your body. Top of the head. Sometimes I feel frustrated and disappointed with my body. Eyebrow and betrayed. That's a big one. Side of the eye. It doesn't always do what I want it to do. Under the eye. It doesn't always look the way I want it to look. under the nose, what if I expressed how I felt? Collarbone, instead of stuffing it into my body. My poor body, it's stuffed with unfelt, undigested over your heart, emotions and experiences under the arm, no wonder it feels. No wonder it breaks down. Top of the head, whatever I can't digest I, or have fully experienced or haven't fully experienced, eyebrow goes into my body. Side of the eye but my body finds it hard to digest and assimilate that stuff too. Under the eye, and it's nearly impossible to eliminate what hasn't been digested. Under the nose, because it's stuck. And that makes me feel, what, whatever, fill in the blank. Collarbone, how can we help each other? How can we unite? How can we be on the same team now? Under the arm to let that go, to let it all go, to start the new timeline, the new narrative. Top of the head, when I think of all my body does for me and has done for me, Eyebrow, tears come to my eyes. Sigh of the eye, tears of appreciation. Under my eye, my heart swells. Under my nose, with appreciation. Collarbone for my beautiful body. My temple. I can honestly say with my hand over my heart, under the arms, I love my body. And it's okay for me to like myself. It's okay for me to love myself. And I'm claiming my sovereignty now. 
and so it is over the heart and so it is and so it is there you go so i hope you enjoyed that conversation i'm sorry we went a little bit long um but that is just a little little blurb of bringing in such a, a valuable topic and I would appreciate um, some feedback if you could. You could email me, you can message me on Facebook if you need to. Um, but I am going to, I'm gonna have um, some body positive IG quotes from Instagram that I pulled up, they're so cool. Um, and I am so glad you feel better, Courtney. And I'm gonna give you some resources on the Queen's Council portal on the site under the events for the brown bag. There's a side, I'm doing events, and then there's another tab and it's the past events. So I can put all this info along with the recording, along with the video so that you can do this as well as the EFT tapping um, too. So feel free to share. And this is where I really want to open dialogue. If you want to put anything out on the Facebook and let me know how it was for you, um, I can kind of fine tune it to maybe the next time another, another conversation about something specific. Um, and, um, and then of course, next Tuesday is the Queen's Council at 1.30 or at 5.30, whichever one that you can join. Um, there's a couple other books, The Body Keeps Score, and this is a little bit more on trauma, but I think it, it resonates to certain things. Um, and I Am Her Tribe. So this is a awesome book. It's more like a woman's book by Danielle Doby. And I just wanted to, to encourage you all to, it's poetry, but it's a very but beautiful one. And then the next one, and I'll put this on here, is Goddesses in Every Woman powerful archetypes in women's life. So some other good books too. I know we're all busy, but thank you all for joining and um, lots of love. I'm glad you feel better. EFT tapping is really powerful. Thanks Abigail. You're very welcome. Yeah. Hi ladies. Have thank a great you. Rest thank you. Thank you. Thank day. you. Thank you. Happy, happy weekend. I'm thank stopping you. the recording.